Welcome to the Taste Test channel and this week we'll be taking an impartial look at affordable red wines from around the world to discover what the differences are and how the same wine from different countries varies in taste. Now I'm sure we all have our favourite when it comes to selecting a bottle of red wine, whether it be Shiraz, Malbec, Chianti etc, but just how much notice do you take of which country the wine's produced in? And yet, as we discussed in our white wine test, we know the taste of fruit and vegetables are massively affected by climate, soil and sunshine, so it's logical therefore that the same grape will taste very different depending on where it's grown. So this week we've picked six varieties of Merlot, all costing less than or around $10 or £8, and we're going to concentrate on the very basics and the main differences in taste, appearance and aroma between a Merlot from one part of the world to another, and to help us decide next time we pick up a bottle of wine how to make a more informed choice. Our wines in this lineup are from France, the USA, South Africa, Australia, Chile and New Zealand. As always, just for fun, we'll be awarding our Taste Test Channel Best in Class Award to the winner. If you're new to the channel, just hit the subscribe button to ensure you don't miss out on any of our regular taste tests. So a quick insight into Merlot itself. Uh, the grape originates from Bordeaux in France, but it's now one of the most widely grown varieties in the world. It's popular in its own right, but also often blended with other grapes such as Cabernet Sauvignon to add body and softness. In fact, Chateau Petrus, one of the rarest and most expensive wines in the world, consists almost entirely of Merlot. Worldwide, there's actually two distinct styles of Merlot. The traditional Bordeaux method harvests the grape early for medium-bodied wines with summer fruit and leafy flavours, whereas many New World regions prefer late harvesting for a darker wine, fuller body and intense plum flavours. The grape has a particularly thin skin, so weather, frosts, water stress, even the amount of pruning has a big impact on the flavour, and it can easily over-ripen in the heat, so you can see how the differing climate of each country could dramatically affect the taste. It ages well and pairs with a wide range of meat and vegetable dishes, and incidentally, November the 7th is International Merlot Day. So our lineup this week is as follows. From Bordeaux in France, we have Merlot Black Label by Les Vignerons de Tutiac. From California in the USA, we have Barefoot. From the Western Cape in South Africa, we have The Signal Post. From Southeast Australia, we have McGuigan Estate. From Chile, we have Casiero del Diablo. And finally, from Hawke's Bay in New Zealand, we have Oyster Bay. As I mentioned, these are all affordable bottles of wine, around $10 or £8, and you can see the price that I paid on each bottle is fairly similar. By the way, the alcohol content of each of these wines is also very similar, between 12.5% to 13.5% volume. Nutritional-wise, our normal categories won't apply to wine, but for those who are interested, the average medium glass of Merlot will contain 138 calories, or 577 kilojoules, about the same as a small bag of potato chips or crisps, so it does add up. Okay, so let's see if there's any distinctive differences in their look and colour. So as you can see, they all look very similar, uh, but after studying them carefully, you can just detect that the wines from South Africa, from Australia and from Chile look very slightly lighter than the others, with the wines from France, from the US and from New Zealand looking slightly darker and more plummy, but it is very subtle. So we're going to start our taste test with this first wine from Bordeaux in France and we'll use this as a bit of a comparison control simply because, as I mentioned earlier, this is where the Merlot grape originates from and Bordeaux remains the most famous and highly respected wine growing region in the world. So this is Bordeaux Black Label Merlot produced by Les Vignerons de Tutiac, which is actually a cooperative wine producer of over 450 certified wine growers. The wine's been made with traditional methods and a partial woke influence, and it's described as a classic Bordeaux at an exceptional price. So I'm really curious to see how it tastes. Okay, so the aroma is subtle, slightly acidic. I'm getting hints of wood, oil, and chocolate, along with a light berry bouquet, but it's delicate. The flavours are pleasant and well-rounded, no one particular flavour stands out. It's got a high acidity that you could say is slightly vinegary, but only very slight and not unpleasant. It's medium bodied, with a softer, creamier finish than its start, and a hint of oaky leather in the aftertaste. It's very nice. 
Next up from the USA we have Barefoot Merlot from California. So Merlot had a surge in popularity in the US in the 90s after a 60 minutes TV report on the health benefits of red wine. Ironically, media then had an equally damaging effect on sales a decade later when the wine-obsessed lead character in the film Sideways famously said, if anyone orders Merlot, I'm leaving. Apparently it largely stemmed from his ex-wife's preference for the wine, so don't let that put you off. Barefoot Brand themselves started in a garage in California in 1965 and now profess to be the most awarded wine brand in the world. They claim this Merlot is one of their very finest, so it would be really interesting to see how it compares. Okay, so the aroma of this one has sharper, more alcoholic notes than the French. I'm getting black currants and a hint of smokiness. The taste has a striking initial currant and cherry flavour. It tastes like a lovely burnt bitter cherry or raisin. There's higher tannins, so it sort of leaves your mouth with that slightly stripped dry feeling, a bit like when you've been eating rhubarb or walnuts, but it's not unpleasant and it's got a soft, smooth finish with lingering fruits. In summary, I'd say it's a really enjoyable, I would say medium bodied wine. It would be perfect with a heavy roast or venison or sat by the fire in the evening. Very nice indeed. Next up from the Western Cape of South Africa, we have the Signal Post Merlot. So South Africa is well known for its quality Merlot with the vineyards of the Western Cape and the warmth of the Southern climate being associated with producing soft and fruity versions of the wine. The signal post and its strap line, the scenic route, is inspired by the iconic blue train which travels through the scenic heart of South Africa and they suggest that the appreciation of their wine should be considered an experiential journey. So let's give it a try. Okay, so the aroma is straight away much more smoky and woody on this one. There's pipe tobacco and a hint of asparagus. Wow, that is unexpected. The taste is very smoky indeed. It's almost like drinking a cigar. It's what you'd expect from a peated whiskey rather than a wine, but I'm liking it. It's got even higher tannins than the last US wine, so you do get that dry stripped feeling in your mouth, but it's got an unexpectedly soft and creamy finish, which prevents it from being at all harsh. Well, signal posts say it's inspired by the blue train, in which case I'd say this is like being in the gentleman's club smoking carriage in the 30s, surrounded by whiskey, pipes and cigars, but really enjoying yourself. Next up, from South Australia, we have McGuigan Estate Merlot. So the Merlot grape is widely grown across Australia, but the majority of it is used for blending. It hasn't historically been associated with producing Merlots of great distinction. However, McGuigan wines are one of the most awarded wineries in the world, winning the title of International Winemaker of the Year in four separate years, so this seems like a good place to start. Okay, so the aroma on this is much less alcoholic than the others. It's subtle with sort of raspberries or strawberries, more like a fruit juice than a wine. There's a light fruity hit to the taste at the start, but then it's quickly overshadowed by vinegariness and it is lacking that classic Merlot smoothness to balance it out. It's quite light bodied, somewhat watery, but it's coupled with high tannins that strip the mouth, so I must say I'm not liking it. In summary, I have to say I wouldn't choose this one. I certainly wouldn't classify it as rough, but it's just not to my taste. If I was served a glass, I wouldn't finish it. Next, we have Cassiero del Diablo Merlot from Chile, made by Concha y Toro Winery. Chile's had a strong reputation for creating good, affordable Merlots since its surge in popularity in the 90s, and due to their lower cost of labour, the price is often cheaper than equivalent wine from other countries. Most Chilean wine comes from the Central Valley region, where due to its vast size, a range of different climates and soil types can be found, enabling a whole host of different grape varieties to thrive. The name Cassiero del Diablo, by the way, literally means the devil's cellar, which stems from a rumour created by the founder of the winery to ward off thieves who were stealing wine from his cellar by pretending that the devil lived there. Diablo wines are now the most widely recognised Chilean wine brand, receiving multiple international awards, so let's see how this one compares. Okay, so the aroma has a soft smell of black currants and a hint of vanilla. Taste-wise, I'm getting a sharpness straight away, followed by a smokiness. There's a hint of that blackcurrant and vanilla in the taste again, but it's edging towards being vinegary. Again, there's high tannins with that strip mouth feeling, but there's less smoothness than some of the others. It's take about 30 seconds for the smoothness to kick in after tasting it. I'm not warming towards this one, although this time I would finish a glass if I was served one, but I wouldn't choose it. Last, but by no means least, we have Oyster Bay Merlot from Hawke's Bay in New Zealand. So New Zealand has become highly respected for its winemaking, with its cool and sunny coastal islands and ancient soils being ideal for grape cultivation. 
Hawke's Bay is the warmest of New Zealand's wine regions, perfectly suited to the Merlot grape, and producing a Bordeaux style of the wine, which is also aged in French oak barrels. This particular Oyster Bay Merlot recently achieved gold at the San Francisco International Wine Awards, so I'm really curious to see how it compares to the others. Okay, so the aroma is very different to the others. I'm getting toffee apples and a hint of firework smoke. The flavours are blackcurrant along with a slight smokiness. It's a similar palette actually to the last Chilean wine with that lasting vinegariness, which is not my personal preference, but it's definitely smoother and softer than the last two wines, which makes it more drinkable. It's a touch sweeter than the others and medium bodied, but with a plainer finish. So just to summarise then, once again, I've been really surprised at just how much variation there is based on where these wines originate. Merlot is inherently a medium bodied, characteristically smooth wine. So if you're after a well-rounded, classic soft taste, then perhaps try the French Bordeaux or the slightly sweeter finished New Zealand wine. For a burnt sour cherry richness that would go perfectly with a roast or red meats, then opt for the Californian wine. Or for an extraordinarily smoky but curiously enjoyable experience, then seek out the South African wine. So that covers how they all differ in taste, and now that we've tasted them all, as always, just for fun, we award our Taste Test Channel winners and Best in Class award. So winning third place, and I have to say I've developed a soft spot for this one. My husband also tasted it and thought it was hilarious. Signal Post from South Africa. A uniquely smoky Merlot with a soft, creamy finish. Winning second place, and just pipped to the post despite being from the home of Merlot, Bordeaux Black Label from France. Well-rounded oaky flavours with a high acidity and a smooth finish. A really nice choice. But in first place this week in the affordable Merlots from around the world, the Taste Test Channel Best in Class Award goes to Barefoot from the USA. Full of lasting cherry and pleasant smoky flavours, really smooth and drinkable. Well done to Barefoot from California. And as always, taste is subjective and this is purely my point of view, but I hope this has provided some useful insights. So I've certainly enjoyed making this episode for more than six reasons, I hasten to add. I really hope you've enjoyed watching it. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell to ensure you don't miss out on any of our regular taste tests. Also, please do consider sharing it with others and check out our other similar video on affordable white wines where we compare six varieties of Sauvignon Blanc. And a huge thank you from me to everyone who supports our new and growing channel. Every thumbs up and subscriber really does make a difference. We're not sponsored, so to the handful of particularly generous viewers who support us via Patreon, we are eternally grateful. Meanwhile, thanks for watching and bottoms up.